Hello folks and welcome. So I have a mini tour and overview of a back box today. It's not a distribution for everyone. However, it's uh, it can be used for different tools to have uh, for a USB stick in your pocket. I'm filming entirely from the USB stick today. This actually came with recording software also. So um, let me talk about all the resizing a little bit later. Let's get this out of the way first. What kind of distribution is this? Again, this is not for everyone. Okay, so hopefully that's large enough for you. So Backbox Linux is a data rescue, forensics, and security type of system. I'm filming entirely from the live media. I don't use the popularity factor at all on DistroWatch. This distribution is out of Italy. It's Debian and Ubuntu based, long-term support. They only offer one desktop, XFCE, and that's plenty good for doing stuff like that. Now, one thing to think about is I sometimes will have different USB sticks for different tools, such as one particular for Gparted. So this also contains that tool on the live medium along with some others. Data rescue, forensics, security, not everybody's cup of tea. However, I, if you are wanting to uh, test drive this thing out, you can go to backbox.org. I'm going to use Alt and F4 and say welcome folks. I am filming in 1920 by 1080 entirely from the USB stick because the recording software actually is contained on the live media. Now, if you decide to actually run this on a laptop with a touchpad, your touchpad driver may not be found with this kind of kernel. If that's the case, then I would recommend a standard USB-based computer mouse or hardwired mouse. All right, if it finds your wireless card, then great. And if it doesn't, well, there are other options out there, but generally, if you want to think about this distribution, it's like a USB-based Linux system in a box. And you can stick in your pocket. If you want to burn that onto the DVD, then so be it. It's not as convenient as a USB stick. XFCE desktop. Based off of Ubuntu 2204 long-term support, Jammy Jellyfish. I have some things enlarged. They're normally not this big. I can cover that a little bit if you don't know how to do that. Same thing with the panel bar. I have that slightly enlarged. I also did something with the furniture in here. I rearranged it and uh, not rearranged it, but resized the icons. I have lots of videos on my YouTube site, folks. Over 400. I don't get paid to make videos. So for me to make the recommendation of subscription is for you. So you can go look through my library and more importantly, once you start watching one of my videos, you can hit stop, come back three days later to pick up where you left off. That's why I would recommend subscription. Other than that, I'm going to show you what's in here. If you like, I'll start with this box. So the box itself, um, you can grab a hold of the corner down here. So basically, I'm going to be looking for the resizer. Okay. I'm just trying to grab the very tip. There we go. Sometimes that can be sensitive. It's even worse if you have a touchpad. These two icons are normally not here, so let me remove them. Um, a lot of you folks know how to do this. So if you wanted to activate your restart and shut down, these are 60 second dedicated and you can activate those. Other than that, this is the multifunction one. It's waiting for you to do something. Not a big deal. Right click, properties, commands, restart and shut down. So 60 seconds and I can walk away from the computer. So I'm gonna hit cancel before that terminates. Right click, properties, size of the icons. I'm using normal, they're usually smaller the size of these guys. So resizing this, resizing icons. All right, whisker menu. A lot of people know how to do this. 
The icons on my desktop are also enlarged. And one more time, I am not filming this from an installed copy. I'm using a USB stick, but I can still look at files through Thunar, my file manager. As long as the drives are not encrypted, like this drive is not, I can view the files in here. Okay, just to give you an idea of that. So if the drive happens to be um, root protected or has permissions, you may see that. That's okay, we can always run Thunar in root mode. If you don't know how to do that, it's sudo Thunar. And that opens that in root mode. I'll make this larger. I can now view the second drive and take a peek at those documents because it's not encrypted. Not encrypted. That's the key. All right, and that's the host system. Keep in mind, this is not installed. I keep reemphasizing that. So there's a lot of tools on this live version, live user. Uh, we can start with uh, maybe Gparted. Maybe that's the only tool you need this for. I have a separate USB stick just for Gparted. Some other folks will also say, well, Gparted is found on a lot of other Linux distributions. They are, but not always. We can also temporarily install software. We, we have lots of tools in here. Unnecessary file cleaner, bleach. We have um, LibreOffice, not the latest version, 7.3, but nonetheless. Dictionary, document viewer. This came installed. That's what I'm using to record with. Internet. We even have GIMP. GIMP is uh, like Photoshop. Now, if you are going to edit something or create documents or whatever else, you either save it to the host system, if that's what you're doing using that live version, or you save it to a separate USB stick because it doesn't have persistent storage. And I like it that way because it runs lightning fast. You can see how responsive this is. And a lot of people always say, well, XFCs, they're, they're ugly desktops. Well, that all depends on your viewpoint. I have lots of videos on my YouTube site to show you how to decorate your menus and icon sets. But in general, you also have some simple settings in here with more than just one icon set. All right, regular accessories. We have the calculator thing. We have notes. We have a terminal emulator. And for some of your older folks, maybe you remember Vim. It's a text editor. All right, skipping over that, we have now some of the security tools. SSH, Tor, Anonymous, and Auditing. There are way too many tools for me to click open. But there's a lot of tools maybe that you may want or may not. I'm just saying these are on board. Keep in mind what kind of distribution this is. But if you just wanted one tool out of there for maybe part it or just want to use the file manager to view those files on the whole system if they're not encrypted, you can also use that for that purpose. So for a distribution that is uh, very small, very fast, and more importantly does have some features, including recording software, this is not too bad. So let's go to settings for a second. Or let's open it this way. That may be better. Uh, for the complainers that the interface is ugly, well, we can do something about that also. We can use appearance. You can add more themes if you like, if you don't like the ones that came with it. I have some different options. Same thing with the icon sets, same deal. Don't know how to do that? Take a look at some of my videos. Find any XFCE distribution and uh, look for the word themes in my keyword searches on those 400 plus videos and you'll find videos on that. All right, so the desktop 
has a couple of different pieces of wallpaper. Not a great deal. This is a live system anyways. Remember, it's not installed. Okay. However, if you want to increase the icon size, I'm using 86. Your icons will be a lot smaller. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080, by the way. You don't want to see these? Turn them off. You know, you have your trash can here, but you also can open that up and see your trash here. Not a big deal. What I'm getting at is um, there is a lot, of, a lot of settings you may be interested. Uh, I wouldn't say the screensaver, not so much, but th there is some tools in here for that if you're trying to do that. The slideshow, if I had some photos, I don't. It's not installed one more time. But a lot of people don't realize the fact that if you have wireless printers that are auto discovered, I didn't set that up. I just plugged in that USB stick and fired up the computer and they found my printer instantaneously. Um, um, a lot of people will ask me the question since I've been around uh, computers for, well, almost 40 years. What's a good printer? I like Brother myself. Why is that? Well, this wireless Brother printer works on all operating systems. That includes Microsoft Windows and Macs and iPhones all Linux distributions are capable of finding this printer. I have not ran into one yet that doesn't. If it doesn't auto discover the printer, I can normally just add it. Generally, I don't have to do anything other than just print. All right, so we have lots of toys that we can customize. Again, depending on if this is installed or not. Now let me talk a little bit about software for this distribution. You may be pleasantly surprised. I will start with Synaptic. You can see additional drivers. You can see Package Manager, which is called Synaptic. And then uh, there's a software store, point and click. Also updates, two different categories. A lot of the uh, live distributions uh, do not show all the full package counts. This one does. A lot of the live systems will say somewhere like 13,000 or maybe 20. This has 75,820. This is Synaptic Package Manager and this is the Debian logo. So where's the software coming from? The repos. Conical. And more importantly, there you have it. If you are going to install this, keep in mind one more time, this is not installed, it's a live copy. I would probably upgrade the driver. I'm using an NVIDIA, or maybe not. If your regular open source driver is working for you, leave it. I'm not going to be playing games with this distribution because um, the tools that are on board I may just want to use one or two of them. Or maybe I just want to um, plug it into different computers using Gparted, for instance. I don't really need anything except the open source. And I certainly wouldn't be installing uh, a driver on a non-installed system to begin with. I just wanted to let you see the driver versions. I'm going to move on now software store I'm not gonna let this thing refresh it already says I have updates I'm not installed yet hamburger menu all right software store again the repositories I'm not gonna click on you just saw that however these are all point and click unlike synaptic I'm going to close that. So lots of toys auditing. All of these have different trees and branches. You don't want you don't want any of these toys. Maybe you want to use just a couple of things like GIMP, a, file, a web browser. You want to record something. Type a quick document using it just for Gparted. 
or the file manager you want to view some files on the host system, providing the drive is not encrypted. Again, I'm capable of viewing these pretty simply. If the drive requires permission denied, that's more likely a permissions thing. You can try opening this up again in terminal by typing sudo thunar. And then you can try your drive. And you can see that I can view those now going full screen. Resizing the icons on the fly, I can do that. I, if you're not a subscriber, what I'm doing here, folks, is holding down my control key while scrolling with my computer mouse. You can do the same thing on a web browser. Uh, if I can find it. So let's go back to this distribution and holding down the control key while scrolling. 30% is minimum, 500% is maximum. Right here. Way too big. So again, this was a mini tour and overview of Backbox Linux, which is a data rescue forensics and security type of a system. But it does offer your live medium where you can use one or two tools or applications. And again, I don't use the popularity factor. Alt and F4. Alt and F4. Thank you for watching.